How long can I store unused kickstart? How do I get rid of red ants? And how do I prevent weeds from growing around my strawberries? Folks, I've got answers to these questions and more coming up on Garden Sense. Hey everybody, I'm Tim Ward and welcome back to Garden Sense. Well, folks, it has been a very, very busy week for us here at Rosen's Online as we had over a hundred emails come through just since our last video podcast. So we combed through everything that was sent in and we selected five questions for today's video. So buckle up everybody, let's jump right in. The first question is from Mike. Hi Tim, I am using Kickstart in a small townhouse yard here in Northern Virginia. I have nowhere close to 5,000 square feet and was wondering about the remaining amount in the hose end sprayer. Would it be less effective if stored for an additional application? Is there a maximum storage time? So if you've already created the concentrate, there really shouldn't be a maximum storage time. It simply shouldn't expire. Now, what I typically do though, is I do not leave it in the hose end sprayer. I actually will remove the reservoir and actually pour it back into the original kickstart container, seal it up and stick it on the shelf. A couple of months later, if I need to use it again, I would simply take it off and I would actually shake up the container really well just to kind of mix the contents together really well. And then I would use it again right in my hose end sprayer. And I'll, I'll be real honest with you, I've never seen any degradation of the product. I've never seen any less effectiveness in the product when it's been stored for several months. And again, there's really no reason that there should be. So could you store it for a year plus? Yeah, in the right conditions, absolutely it should work. Now, in terms of the dry powder, I know that wasn't part of your question, but I do get this question a lot. It, it can sit indefinitely. If you haven't added any water to it to create that concentrate, just stick it in a cool, dry place and in theory it should last forever. So I hope that answers your question. Question number two comes from Art. Hi Tim, it seems like red ants decided to take up residence or frequently visit the Swedish ivy in our family room. Any ideas how to get rid of them without harming the plant? So because this is an indoor plant, I would highly recommend using neem oil. Neem oil is toxic to ants if it's sprayed directly on them. And it's a very, very helpful deterrent to red ants if you just spray down the rest of the plant. So here's what I do. If you see any ants actively crawling on the plant, make sure that you spray it down with neem oil. That should take care of the existing ants. However, that, that neem oil, if the plant is properly covered, will act as an effective deterrent and the red ants won't want to visit it anymore. Now, I'll be honest with you, the bigger issue is to identify where those red ants are coming from and take corrective measures. But in terms of just making sure that you can keep that plant safe, neem oil is a natural product. The plant will be perfectly fine if you soak it down with this stuff and it's gonna prevent not only the red ants, but a lot of other insects from bothering that ivy as well. The next question is from Lynn. Hi Tim, my cucumber plants, cucumbers, are no longer dark green, but lighter green. What's wrong and what should I do? So really it, it could be two things. It could be a deficiency in terms of the minerals that the plant is taking in. Most likely it's, it's a chlorosis or the early stages of chlorosis, which is really just a, an iron deficiency. It could also mean that the pH is too high in the soil. Now, given that it's almost August, um, there's a couple of things that you, you may want to consider. One would be, you know, maybe just put down a little bit of Garden Trust. Garden Trust is going to put in a lot of nutrition into the soil. And even though Garden Trust is going to last for several months, and my guess is your garden will stop producing before Garden Trust stops fertilizing. So you may consider that to be a little bit of a waste of, of product usage. But again, Garden Trust is a great way to feed your plants because it does put in a lot of the necessary nutrients, uh, minerals, things like that into the soil. The other thing I would absolutely recommend regardless of whether or not you use Garden Trust 
is to put down Kickstart. If you put down Kickstart now and do it once a week until that garden stops producing, uh, what's gonna happen is it's gonna allow not only your cucumber plants, but any other plant in that garden to really start taking in more of the nutrition that's found in the soil. So again, my recommendation would be, hey, just put down a little bit of garden trust and then apply Kickstart once a week. But if you don't wanna waste the garden trust, then I would definitely just continue to use Kickstart because again, that's not only gonna benefit the, the cucumber but it's going to benefit any other plant that you have in your garden. The fourth question is from Dan. Tim, what can you provide to kill squash bugs? They've already killed two squash plants and two zucchini plants and have moved on to my cucumber plants. So when it comes to bug infestation on vegetable plants, I always start with neem oil because it's a natural product. And this is just me, but I'm always hesitant to use a lot of chemicals on plants where I'm consuming the food. You're also gonna be a little bit limited in terms of what's going to, to kill it and then allow a, a crop to be harvested, say, you know, within a day or so. But neem oil, kind of eliminates the need for all of that. Neem oil will help control and kill the squash bugs that you have. And again, if you spray down your entire garden with neem oil, it should really act as a great deterrent to the squash bugs, as well as a plethora of other insects. So head over to rosensonline.com, pick up some neem oil. Look, if you really wanna go a, a chemical route, a product like Eight by Bonide uh, is also approved for uses in gardens. Just read the label in terms of when you can use it and how soon you can actually harvest the vegetables or the fruit you know, after it's been applied. So again, both products are available over at rosensonline.com. The final question for today is from Frank. Tim. To keep weeds out of strawberries, what can I use to keep the weeds from growing around them? So it kind of depends on the type of weeds that we're talking about. If it's grass or grassy weeds that are growing around your strawberries, then you definitely want to head over to Rosen's online and pick up Grass Getter. Grass Getter will kill the grasses, it will kill the grassy weeds, but it's not going to impact your strawberry plants. It's perfectly safe for them. If it's broadleaf weeds, that's an entirely different issue. And unfortunately, you're just gonna need to pull them out by hand. I'm not aware of a, a chemical product that will kill broadleaf weeds, but not impact your strawberries in a negative way. So again, if it's a grassy weed or some type of, of just grass that's growing up in your garden, definitely pick up some grass getter. It'll really, really help. If it's broadleaf weeds, unfortunately, put on some gloves and you need to start applying some elbow grease because that's the only thing that I would recommend in that particular scenario. All right, folks. Just a couple final thoughts before we wrap up this video podcast. The Turf Trust Summer Stock Up Special ends today. So if you have not fed your lawn, it's summer feeding yet, or you are looking ahead to the fall and you wanna consider stocking up, then make sure you head over to rosensonline.com today and take advantage. There is a special price on the product and it's gonna qualify for free shipping. So this is frankly the best price that you're gonna see all year for Turf Trust fertilizers. But again, it's ending today. So head over to rosensonline.com and take advantage while you can. Folks, we got a ton of emails this past week and a lot of them, again, were questions about Kickstart. Folks, you really need to start using Kickstart now. We are heading into August. It's If it's not already hot, which I know it is, it's gonna get even hotter in August. This is a brutal time of year for a lot of lawns as well as gardens. So make sure that you are applying Kickstart regularly to really strengthen the root systems of your lawn, strengthen the root systems of your trees, your shrubs, your gardens, and allow that Kickstart to really keep your gardens and your grass looking great. Folks, as always, if you have questions, send the email directly to me, Tim, at rosensonline.com, and I will be sure to get back to you. Just give me a couple of days to do so. We were so busy this past week answering emails, and I'll be perfectly honest with you, we love it. We love being able to help each and every one of you with your unique questions, and obviously, it gives us a lot of content to create these weekly videos as well. So again, send your email directly to Tim at rosensonline.com and I will be happy to help you with whatever is ailing your lawn, your gardens, your trees, or your shrubs. 
Folks, as always, thank you so much for the time that you spent with us today. It really does mean a lot to us, and I hope you have an amazing rest of the week. God bless. Thank <laughs> you.